I'm reading to you today from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 3. And this is the story of John the Baptist. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the desert of Judea, announcing, change your hearts and lives. Here comes the kingdom of heaven. He was the one of whom Isaiah the prophet spoke when he said, the voice of one shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John wore clothes made of camel hair with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. People from Jerusalem throughout Judea and all around the Jordan River came to him. As they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. Many Pharisees and Sadducees came to be baptized by John. He said to them, you children of snakes, who warned you to escape from the angry judgment that is coming soon? Produce fruit that shows you have changed your hearts and lives. And don't even think about saying to yourselves, Abraham is our father. I tell you that God is able to raise up Abraham's children from these stones. The axe is already at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that doesn't produce good fruit will be chopped down and tossed into the fire. I baptize with water those of you who have changed your hearts and lives. But the one who is coming after me is stronger than I am. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. The shovel he uses to sift the wheat from the husks is in his hands. He will clean out his threshing area and bring the wheat into his barn. But he will burn the husks with a fire that can't be put out. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Last Wednesday, 14 people in San Bernardino, California, lost their lives as a result of yet another mass shooting here in this country. Now, I have to tell you, that is not the way I like to start a sermon especially a sermon during this Advent season, because Advent is supposed to be a time of joy. Advent is supposed to be a time of anticipation, celebrating the birth of our Savior, which is to come. This is supposed to be a happy time. And yet, for the families of 14 people in Southern California this year, this time of year will not be very happy. Instead, it will be filled with sadness and grief. Now, I don't know if any of you were paying attention to the news or paying attention to uh, social media following those shootings, but in the aftermath, there was a lot of speculation about why the couple who did this horrible thing chose to do what they did. And it really didn't take long for the conversation to turn political did it. Less than 24 hours. Now, there was also a lot of activity on social media, mostly from people who were asking us to keep the people in San Bernardino in our thoughts and prayers. People asking us to offer our comforting words. But some of the comments on social media were even more bold. In addition to asking for thoughts, and prayers, those folks also demanded something more. They demanded action. They demanded that we do something about gun violence in this country. They demanded that we hold our leaders in this country accountable for the decisions that they make every day. According to those people posting those those statements, It's no longer okay for us to just sit around and wait for something to happen. It is our time to act because we have waited long enough. Now, 
when you consider the idea of waiting, there are actually two ways that we can wait. There is passive waiting and there is active waiting. Passive waiting is when you're content to do nothing but sit back and uh, just wait. We don't take any action. We hope that something good is going to happen. We might even believe in our hearts that something good is going to happen, but we don't do anything about it. We're content just to wait. Joyce Meyer, a Christian author and speaker, says that these kinds of waiters are also short on patience because when you sit back and do nothing while you wait, you tire of it very quickly. You simply give up, and sometimes giving up means not just giving up waiting, but also giving up on life. Joyce says that these kinds of people have a lot of wishbone, but not a lot of backbone. I think that these kinds of waiters, the passive kinds, also miss out on many opportunities because they are not paying attention to God and the way that God works. It's kind of like the person who goes to work one day and finds out that she has lost her job because the company that she worked for was able to develop a machine to do the work that she was doing. She might go home and think, okay, well, I know there's another job out there. I'll just sit and wait for opportunity to knock. But what happens when it doesn't? She may wait for a day or a week or a year, but eventually she'll probably give up waiting, right? So it made me wonder what would happen if that same woman, while she was waiting, she went back to school. Or what would happen if while she was waiting, she developed a new skill? What would happen if while she was waiting, she was listening for God's guidance, telling her what new direction she should go in. What kinds of opportunities would actually knock on her door then? I think the opportunities are endless in that case. Had she done all of these things, or even one of those things, she would have been actively waiting, which is the difference between that and passive waiting. Active waiting involves action. It is waiting, but actively waiting. It is the difference between saying, I wish, and saying, I know. We wait for opportunity to knock, but we do it in a way that increases the odds. And yes, we are still waiting, but we are waiting with expectation. Think of it this way. When you go to a restaurant, who brings you the meal? The waiter, right? The waiter brings you your meal. Now, in most restaurants, the waiters aren't just standing around waiting, right? Well, sometimes they are, especially if it's really slow in the restaurant. But most of the restaurants I go to, the waiters are rushing around, taking people's orders and delivering food, making sure that their customers are happy, right? Well, at least if they want a good tip, that's what they're doing. But what is another term that we use for waiter? Server. server. So a person who is actively waiting is a server. When we actively wait, we are also serving. Now, I know that this is not a new idea. This is, there's nothing new about what I'm telling you. In fact, it's as old as the hills. It's as old as the prophets themselves. Because throughout their ministries, the prophets that we read about in the Old Testament, who for, particularly Isaiah, who foretold God's realm, they were telling the people not to sit idly by and wait, but rather to do something while they wait. Isaiah foretold the coming of the Messiah, even though he didn't know when that Messiah was going to come. He told the people that instead of passively waiting, that they should take action. 
He told them it was time to repent. It was time to do what the Lord required, which I know you all know this from Micah, to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. Even John the Baptist, who we read about in the New Testament, he was a prophet in his own right. And he foretold the coming of Christ, and he said that we are to work while we wait. He said, repent and sin no more. Change your hearts and lives. Produce good fruit, not bad. Prepare the way of the Lord. Isaiah foretold the coming of Christ, even though he didn't know when Christ was going to come. And John the Baptist foretold the coming of Christ before he even knew that Christ was already there. They waited for God's promise, but they did not wait passively. They did not sit idly by. They did God's work while they waited. And my friends, so must we. During this Advent season, we await the coming of Christ. We wait for the day, <coughs> excuse me, when we will celebrate his birth. And just like Isaiah and John the Baptist and other, all of the other prophets, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> pardon me, we don't know when Christ will come again. But we must not wait passively. We must not be passive waiters. We must be active servers. God is calling us to be God's instruments of peace. God wants to work through us to transform the world. God wants us to work while we wait, to bring love and hope to our troubled world. We must work while we wait to make sure people have homes. We must work while we wait to make sure that the hungry are fed. We must work while we wait to stop the injustices in our lives and to make positive changes in our community. We must work while we wait to change the hearts of those who are in positions of power and who make decisions that literally affect our lives every single day. We must work while we wait knowing full well that Christ is coming, that hope is on the way. Christ came to us many years ago in the form of a baby in a manger. And Christ will come again to restore God's realm. And our job in the in-between time is to work to bring about God's kingdom here on earth. We are to work while we wait, knowing that hope is on the way. Will you pray with me? Oh, Lord Jesus, we know that you are coming. And we know that when that day comes, that this world will be transformed. But God, we also know that it is up to us to do your work here on earth while we wait. And so be with us. Walk with us. Remind us of the things that we are called to do even as we wait for the hope that is on the way. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>